paradise. I want to be with you, but... Give me your answer tonight. Yes. Mmm, now obviously tonight's the night because here he is, Jason Connery. <laughs> I feel very underdressed, actually. I, you should have said that louder. You actually said, will you be my Valentine? You could be the toy boy, you know. You could be. <laughs> mm -mm. You're obviously very romantic anyway at heart. I'm quite romantic. I mean, I, I'm not used to uh, actually ask, asking people to be my Valentine in front of <laughs> such a large audience. But, uh, yes, I think so. Why not? Are you good with the chat-up lines with your girlfriends? Well, you'd have to ask them. I don't know. <laughs> uh, girlfriend, I think we should Friends. say, rather than fr friends. Well, particularly because she's watching tonight. Anyway. She is. She's watching at home with uh, a new element to the family, a, a wee little puppy from Battersea Dog Homes called Ollie. I hope Ollie's not going to take over well, in romantic sex. No, <laughs> I don't think so. He's, uh, he has a penchant for jumping on the bed a lot, but he gets thrown <laughs> off and sleeps downstairs. <laughs> Actually, when it comes to Chris's, uh, Chris's, to kisses on, on the screen, do you find that... Uh, fine or do you ever come across you know cases where you think but well, I don't really like this person very much <laughs> <laughs> well you're very aware of the fact that, that um, usually when you kiss someone it's because um, you've chosen to kiss them and they've co chosen hopefully to accept it whereas when you're working in a film sense you um, very often find that uh, uh, that the person has been picked by the producer or the director and uh, you're not sure whether they really want to kiss you and you're not sure whether you really want to kiss them and the thing that you're very aware of is the fact whether you've got sort of a bad breath or, you know, <laughs> so as you come towards them, you're hoping desperately that they haven't got a bad breath or that you haven't got a bad breath. <laughs> what do you do? Do you kind of squirt yourself before you approach that? Yeah, well, you can do that. I mean, I don't know. It all depends what you've had for lunch before. <laughs> you hope the kisses happen before lunch because if it's after lunch and you've had a curry or something, it's always bad. <laughs> Have you had to do many nude scenes in the various television and films that you've done? Well, there's not obviously not, I mean, uh, not, uh, not full nude scenes. They have a, um, an interesting contra contraption which they call a, a cash sex, which is a sort of um, half a pair of underpants oh. that you wear across the front um, but doesn't show at the back. So if you sh shoot from the side, you sort of, you don't see any band or anything like that. So it gives the appearance as though you're naked. Oh, so you're decent really the other side, is that it? Well, yeah, you are. Um, unfortunately, it, and <laughs> <laughs> and it depends where you're standing. But a, a number, of, a number of, um, a number of times, uh, they have a, uh, s for some reason, they tend to fall off, which is uh, <laughs> when you stand up afterwards. But um, you know, you kind of smile. <laughs> nothing but the smile, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course, your dad was voted, what, the sexiest man alive, so That's right, yeah. how did you regard that within the family? Well, we all had a bit of a laugh about that. I mean, <laughs> he, was, he, was, uh, he was quite chuffed about it, you know, all that business. <laughs> but uh, he, he, he took it as a, as a bit of a joke. I mean, I think it's good that someone of his age should be voted... As, uh, <laughs> No doubt you said that to him umpteen times. Uh, no, I didn't actually, <laughs> funnily enough. Um, but he, uh, he sort of took it as a joke and, uh, you know, Stefan, my stepbrother, and I hope it runs in the family. Really. I bet so. you do. <laughs> now, the other side of paradise, it's a bit of a triangle in terms mm. of relationship. So how mixed up does that get? Um, well, basically, he, um, Chris Masters is this doctor and he gets sent out to the, to the Cook Islands, Coraluna as it's known in the, in the story. And he's very sort of quite priggish, quite direct, very sort of black and white and, uh, you know, gone through a very academic schooling and totally involved in what he's doing. He doesn't really care about what other people think of him or anything. He's not very well liked in, in the hospital because he's young and kind of... Should I say thrusting? Perhaps not. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, not. <laughs> and uh, um, he then, he then ha something happens to him where he is actually sent out to, to this place, Coraluna. And he finds himself in an environment which he's totally uh, unused to. And um, initially he doesn't make many friends. And uh, it's sort of, uh, the story sort of basically shows the unravelling of a person who becomes more adept at communication. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, 
But here you are playing a doctor, and I always heard that you couldn't stand the sight of blood. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm not very good with blood. I, I'm, I'm incredibly accident prone. And um, uh, I mean, uh, it's quite extraordinary. I'm not clumsy. My brother's clumsy. But I'm, I'm accident prone. And I, I mean, things happen to me that I think possibly I'd be a good doctor because I've been in a hospital quite often from those things. But, but uh, <laughs> Well, what sort of things, then? Oh, things, um, for instance, uh, there was a coming out of a car park, one of those multi-story car parks. I was in Los Angeles, and the door like this. And I was just walking through after a car walk, uh, driven out, and it came down and hit me on the temple and sort of cut a hole in it, and I kind of passed out. The guy who was head of the car park thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever seen. <laughs> Other people always do, don't they, in the middle of accident? <laughs> the best one, actually, was I was in the middle of uh, the desert in Africa, and there was, um, I was filming out there, and there was a, uh, a whole um, sort of about 25 baboons um, as there are in, in the middle of the desert <laughs> and uh, they kept wandering off so they put these sort of collars and things around them and they'd put them all together with fishing wire because you can't see fishing wire on screen to make them look as though they're all thin and I'm meant to be sitting in the middle of them on a rock with his big beard on kind of sitting there and um, this uh, woman shouted who was uh, one of the makeup girls shouted about something and they all took fright and went completely ape <laughs> and, uh, and they all started, and, and they're all covered in fishing wire, and then I, suddenly they started bowling towards me in this sort of gaggle of, of baboons, and they're pretty fierce baboons, I tell you. And they all came, and I was in the middle of them, and they're all fighting and trying to get out, and I'm in there, and that, so that was... For Jason, not a pretty sight underneath all of that. <laughs> no, no. Well, I hope it's an accident-free evening. I know you're taking your girlfriend out for a Valentine's dinner, but yeah. in the meantime, I got the red roses, so... Jason, thank you very much indeed. Thank Jason Connery. Now transport yourself back to November and some of the people it's helped from his sparring partner. Will you welcome Sue Cook? And he's about to hit our screens again in Noel Barber's steamy bestseller, The Other Side of Paradise. As a young English doctor who embarks on a turbulent relationship with a society girl and a forbidden love affair with a native princess. It's so beautiful here. It's a place of peace. So many characters. Many more could have died. You hadn't. No harness him. It is all arranged. It was my father's wish. And you? What do you wish? I am Riki. That means I am responsible for my people. I must go now. Why? So you can find your people. Please welcome Jason Bonnery. because of the situation, two women getting there. Was it hot and steamy, I've got to get this right, climactically, the climate? Yes, yes. Um, not quite, but it was, uh, she had been I anticipated. I was quite relieved actually when we got there. The island is in the middle of the South Pacific. I mean, really are a sort of tenuous island. Um, in the middle of nowhere, it takes uh, 45 minutes to drive around the whole island, which is great for me because I get lost in a telephone box. So, uh, so if you start off one way, mm. you'll eventually get to where you're going anyway, because it's just... And um, you're just in the middle of the sea, and, and if a big wave came, you feel as if you'd be taken away, and nobody would know for a couple of years. How much do you actually get to see, though, when you go filming? I mean, a lot of people think it's, think it's just luxury hotel, limousine, to set, back again, don't see the people. No, no, I mean, there's, the hotels are never above the tree line on this island. Um, and uh, the, it's very simple accommodation, but very nice. I mean, they, mm. they've tried to sort of keep into t traditional mould. And uh, we very much, um, a lot of the, the natives um, of the island were in the, in the show and uh, very much involved in everything that was going on. 
So they sort of um, came into our lives in, this, in, in the work sense, and then we went into their lives in the um, families and mm -hmm. uh, the kids everywhere, and uh, they all wanted to show us how they actually lived, you know, and everything. It was really nice to be there. They were very, very endearing and mm. uh, very attractive people. D you held a premiere over there, didn't you? That's right. They, I, I wish I'd been there, actually, because <laughs> they all went crazy. and Because every time they saw one of their friends or them, you know, they were all, ah, ah, they had to keep stopping the film and rewinding. Oh, great. Yeah, what a lovely so experience yeah. that must have been. Now, it's based, isn't it, on the Noel Barber book? It's, it's not a faithful adaptation. No, that's right. It's just... Um, Basically, it only covers about the, the first, I don't know, 100 pages, something like that. It's um, the setup of the story, the, the young doctor who goes to, to Coraluna, as it's called in the program, um, that, and, and all the different characters. Basically, uh, the initial characters are set up, and then the story progresses. But in the book, the, the story progresses to, to such length. It's a very big book, and goes off, and the princess goes to America, and the various things yeah. happen. So we kept it, it very much, yeah. Does wonder quite a lot. But how useful is that to you as an actor when you're you're doing a film of something that's from a book? I mean, do you read the book? Yeah, often um, I'd read a book uh, or anything to do with it, really. Um, any other, for instance, if I was doing when I did Journey's End, I read a lot of war poetry, which is about the First World War, mm. and a lot of uh, uh, research, you know, um, and also about uh, what it'd be like to be a soldier in the trenches in that in that way and things. And uh, you can build up a real mental image. And there are always little things that you pick up, little nuances that uh, may not be in the script at all and you, you put right. in and hopefully make it sort of more three-dimensional and whole. Because we had Wilbur Smith in the other day and he, he said he doesn't like film ad adaptations of his books, mm. but he likes, he doesn't mind the miniseries because they don't... Well, I can understand that because in a miniseries you get the chance to um, set the scene mm. and then you get a whole progression and there's a whole sort of gamut of things that happen in, in, in especially in Wilbur Smith it's very epic proportions yeah. And you've got hundreds of different characters, and you've got different avenues to travel up, and you can't do it in two hours. And in a miniseries, you get that wonderful ability to, to, to carry it on through, you know, uh, eight hours, ten hours, whatever it is. Mm. And he wa writes those sort of wonderful, huge, epic, um, expansive stories with uh, hundreds of different people yeah. and emotions <laughs> and everything. Th there's a whisper about you doing somebody else's book soon, isn't there? Well, it's too, well, yes, there, I, I was, I, we were talking about this yeah. earlier, there was a, uh, uh, Jilly Cooper's uh, um, obviously got a series of books out, um, yeah. and um, one of the rights had been bought to the, uh, to the first one, Riders, and they were, um, I, I didn't know the books that well, but a lot of people talked about the character Rupert Campbell Black. Oh, that's why. Was, <laughs> but, uh, and so I read the book on that, but that, uh, whether that happens yeah. or not. Do, do you like playing unattractive parts? Uh, would you play unattractive physically parts? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, for me anyway, personally, the whole sort of joy of doing what I do is the, hopefully the ability um, to diversify. Mm. I mean, you were talking just before about, um, uh, you know, every, I think everybody seems to be um, categorized very much. At, um, it's, it's sort of very easy for um, journalists and casting directors and various people to sort of pigeonhole you. Oh, that's what he does. Or that's what she does. And I think... Um, it's much more exciting to, to not be pigeonholed. Have you ever played a lout, though, a sort of beery, boozy-looking, scrubby lout? No, I played a real, a real nasty piece of work. It was, it was a very, and the only reason I got to play it really was because it was some friends making the film, and um, it was very low budget, and uh, mm. because normally I wouldn't be thought in that role, but I played yeah. a real, real little. Um, yes. Yes, <laughs> and I had great fun doing that. I shaved my head and wore little round glasses, and uh, and. Um, committed various crimes, which I didn't do physically, but I told people to do in a very charming way. <laughs> has, has the name ever closed doors to you? Being, you know, Sean's son, has it ever closed a door because you'd be thought I, to be too famous or whatever? I don't know. I, you see, those d I'm, I'm never on the inside of the door. If it has been closed, mm. I'm always on the outside anyway, sure. so I don't know why it's been closed. But um, I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. I, I, I'm often asked, you know, if it's good or bad. I, I really couldn't tell you because I haven't been anything else far as yeah. being the son of someone famous. But um, it definitely uh, is something that is, 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 is given a lot of attention. Oh, sure, yeah. Which means that um, some things that you think are more important aren't given as much attention. So in, 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 a, in a way, it can be, you know... It might, it might open a few doors for you in your, the project you're hoping to get off the ground, which is an H.E. Bates... That's show, right, yeah. yes. Um, Feast of July. It's, uh, 
just a really good story, really solid, playing a, a farmer, and he's. Uh, I just think it would be a very interesting uh, film to do, and unfortunately, they need half a million pounds. So if anyone's well, what about? Listen, I have read in the papers at the weekend that Michael Caine wants to set up a. Um, a film company in this country, and uh, right, well, you know, I'm him. sure he knows the Connery name. Yeah, well, I mean, I might even give him a part. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably watching, so he'll be on the line to you a little bit later. Right. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Jason Connery. Actually, so you're staying with us because um, uh, we're going to be used as stooges for my final guest today, who refers to himself as a corporate entertainer or mentalist. Well, I won't hold that against him. Please welcome back Graham Jolly. Graham, what's a Hello. mentalist? Hello, Ginny. What is a mentalist? Yes. Well, it's a person who involves people with experiments. Yes. In chance, suggestion, probability, telepathy. You don't, you don't like the word tricks or magician or. No, I am aware of some magician techniques, but um, I very rarely use them. Only when I'm under, under pressure. You don't look like somebody who would be in showbiz, if I can be so rude. No, no. Um, I used to be a merchant banker. Yes. A lot of people think I still am. <laughs> and um, and I, but I left the bank about 15 years ago. I had a, I, was, I had a wonderful opportunity. I was invited to study parapsychology with Dr. Eugene Wolfe at the Unstock Institute in Leningrad. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not strictly true. It was a bloke called Sid in Clacton. But yes. I... <laughs> it sounds as good anyway, <laughs> yes. doesn't it? But I study in various sources. Well, know. I won't say a trick, no. but you've got a little event for us now. Mm -hmm. um, you've put that tray of watches there. Yes, yeah, we've collected these. One of the uh, producers collected a few from the audience, I believe. Yes. And I, n I noticed that, Jason, uh, you have a rather nice watch, and I think a lot of people can see this. Could I borrow it just for a moment, Jason? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, <laughs> Jonathan. That's right. Jason, I've got one of our balls in already. Now, would you... Not too much noise, please. Jason, would you object if I alter the time on your watch? No, no, certainly okay. go, go ahead. I'm going to set your watch, if I may, to a time, I think about... about there. Jason, would you please hold your left hand out flat and just close your hand around the watch. I wonder if you just hold it like that so we can get it in shot. Right. Now, let's take one of these watches. This is where I'd like you to help me, Judy. Oh, right. well, the winder won't come out. Again, let's try to hold another nice piece. Pocket watch. Judy, I'm going to ask you to take this watch. Yeah. And in a moment, I'd like you to set it to a time. Will you do that for me? Yes. Let's now ask Judy to set the watch to a time. Before you do this, just hold the watch, would you? Turn the winder around, just to familiarise yourself with the watch, backwards and forwards, everything okay? Mm -hmm. Would you stop? What time, Judy, have you stopped the watch to? I tell you. Please. 20, 26, 25 past five. Okay, would you close it, please? Turn the hands around again, would you? Hand with the watch. Now, this time you couldn't see because the lid was closed, so no. obviously it'd be purely random. This time it's what? Well, you didn't move it much, about quarter, quarter past five, is that right? Yes. Judy, this is the important one. Take the watch, turn the hands around again once more, and this will be the time, this will be the time we will use. We have never met before. I know. Just in a previous life. <laughs> like men's <Menzel's> waiting room. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> hold the watch in your hand, would you? Oh, hold the watch in your hand. May we just recap? Jason, you let me watch. Is that true? Which I've set yep. to a time which you have in your hand. And Judy's yes. set the pocket watch to a time, which I believe... Would you just open your hand, Judy? I'm not absolutely sure if I'm 100% correct. What time, Judy, does the watch say? What time do you set the watch to? 5 to 8. 5 to 8? I don't know if viewers can see that. Five to eight. Yeah. You know, this is extraordinary. Five to eight. Jason, you have your own watch in your own hand. Yep. What is the time on your watch? Five to eight. Oh, I don't. <laughs> you know, folks, I've got to say, I've got, I must say this, I feel genuinely privileged to be here today and to have witnessed this. <laughs> I'm obviously alone. Now, the, um... <laughs> you see, the interesting thing is I'm normally about nine hours out. That's quite a breakthrough. That is amazing. <laughs> mm. The thing I like about you is that I actually did the stooge for you. You probably don't remember it. At, at a corporate we, entertainment... You were in the audience, weren't you? I was. I, may I just say one thing? Yes. Uh, I mean, excuse me, 